This is the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak, and it is a pleasure to be alongside financial instructors Kirk Cassidy and Michael Mazarin. We have a great show lined up for you today. We're going to be talking about inflation and its effects on you and your retirement and how to combat that. It's so important these days, and we're hearing a lot about it in the news. So we're going to dive into that topic, and we're also going to tell you about how you can get registered for Kirk and Michael's upcoming courses. And these are taught at local universities around our community, so be listening for that. And I also want you to know, if you're on Facebook, be sure to follow the Retirement Education Foundation. That way you can stay in the know on everything Kirk and Michael and the Foundation are doing so that you can feel more confident about retirement. Kirk and Michael, it's great to be back with you. It's good to be back, Megan. You know, inflation, we haven't heard about it for years. And then all of a sudden, it's in just about every headline. What's going on? Well, so, Michael, I'm glad we've got Michael today. We'll miss my brother, Paul, but I'm glad we have Michael. Michael has came to us as a financial analyst, also acting as a financial advisor in our private firm. And he also helps um, on the instruction side at the, at the courses. And his focus and specialty is the data, the numbers, and the statistics. And so I'm glad we have them because some really interesting things are happening from an inflation perspective. And really, I know the debate right now is, is it transitory, meaning short-term, Michael, or is it long-term? And I think today, Michael, we're, we're going to talk more about it really doesn't matter if it's short or long-term for those people within five to 10 years of retirement through retirement. It, it doesn't change your strategies. It, it shouldn't, at least. It shouldn't change your strategies as much as people focus on it. And to your point, so you mentioned transitory. Transitory is the new favorite buzzword in the media, meaning is this short-term inflation that's going to go away once supply chain wrinkles and labor shortages sort of iron themselves out, or is this inflation with us here to stay? Now, one of the reasons inflation is in the, in the news so much in the past week or so is because the June year-over-year inflation numbers were just posted. Yes. And it was about 5.4% inflation, which is the second highest year over year inflation number in the past roughly 30 years. So, Michael, so it's a little misleading, right? Because the year over year inflation number is year over year when we were, the economy was shut down, right? Last year in 2020, economy was shut down, right? So, it, it while it, it's a big number, certainly, but year over year, where was it coming from? And that's called the base effect because we're coming off such a low base. Last year in June 2020, we were in the heart of the lockdown, the quarantine. People weren't traveling. People weren't buying things as much. So now we're coming off that very low base. That 5.4% number looks huge, and it is. it can be significant, but it's coming off such a low base that's not quite as impactful as people might think it is. And the truth is, Michael, we have a, sort of a perfect storm th- that's creating some of this inflation Truly, personal savings accounts, balance sheets, people's personal savings are at all-time high. They're flush with liquidity between government stimulus, in government intervention. Increased wages. Increased wages. And, and then we were shut down, right, Michael? We were literally locked down so that pent-up demand of wanting things to do things, have home improvements, all the things that you normally would do in a regular economy was shut down. So once things opened up, we have a demand with liquidity at all-time highs, and then we have a supply shortage, right? Because the economy was shut down, manufacturing was shut down, and there's a shortage of just about everything. So that perfect storm sort of created this, and I think part of the reason why they, they say it's transitory, now I might argue that because I, I see some other things I'm concerned with, at, at the core, understanding how to manage inflation and retirement is critical and should or it should, whether it should or shouldn't change your investments, I think we would debate and we talk about in our classes. We believe it's more important about where you're taking your income from when we have moments of inflation to help manage that long-term impact of your retirement plan. And these are some of the things we talk about in our seven-hour courses that are taught at all the major universities. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity to attend one of these seven-hour courses. And if you'd like to register, you can go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. 
Glad to be here with Kirk and Michael. We're so pleased you've joined us for the Retirement Education Hour. What can our listeners expect to learn today on some of these big topics, especially inflation? Well, Megan, we want to make sure people understand what's driving some of this inflation and why some people think it's transitory short and others think it's long term. But I think the biggest takeaway, Michael, is how should you think about inflation, whether we have it or not, to plan throughout retirement, particularly from a cash flow perspective? Is it really as impactful as the industry suggests it is? Maybe why they suggest inflation is such a big problem. And the mistakes we're fearful people will make earlier in their retirement because of their fears of inflation that just won't have the impact on retirees they think it will. Right. We talk about in the class all the time how older people are not cheap. They're scared. They're scared that if they go and spend $100,000, $150,000 a year in their first 10 years of retirement, are they going to have enough in their 70s, 80s, and 90s for uh, healthcare expenses or what they fear of inflation, rising inflation costs. So Michael, exactly. We want to talk about how lifestyle changes impacts your income demands in your 80s and things that you can do to protect yourself against the outliers, right? We know the outlier really is a healthcare issue in your 80s. It's long-term care. That is the outlier. But the truth is what you spend in your 60s that lifestyle isn't the lifestyle you're going to have in your 80s. Well, exactly. So, for example, the drivers to that uh, most recent 5.4% inflation number were things like traveling, traveling, leasing cars. You're not doing that in your 70s, 80s, and 90s anymore. Right. You have one car, not two cars in your 80s. You're not traveling nearly as much in your 80s. So those are the, some of the things where there are many variables that we want to touch on, given our experience, to help you understand and stop being so fearful of everything in retirement and let the people on TV, radio, and newspapers scare you into underspending what you otherwise could be spending in retirement. That's one of our fears. So that's what we want to focus on today. In our courses, you got to understand the courses that we teach, these are eight-hour courses that teach you how to map out a complete income plan, estate plan, tax plan, retirement plan, protecting your surviving spouse and then your loved ones after you're gone. It's a comprehensive course taught at all the major universities. To attend, all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. You can go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Or you can call 800-240-8981. And we're back with Kirk and Michael right after this. Back with Kurt Cassidy, Michael Mazarin. They are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. And we've been telling you that the foundation sponsors courses throughout the year to help you gain retirement confidence. And these are deep dives. These are either one or two day courses, several hours long, and it's immersive so that you can really absorb everything you need to know about planning for a modern 21st century retirement. A lot of moving parts here, but the good news is the Retirement Education Foundation makes it easy for you to get registered. You can do it by phone or online. The phone number 800-240-8981 or go online to retirementplanningedu.org. These courses are held at local universities, making it convenient for you to do that. You can also do it online in the comfort of your own home, $29 for registration to attend, and a really great way to get more confidence, as we said, about retirement. And a lot of people wondering, Kirk and Michael, about inflation and And this is wearing at some people's confidence about retirement. Why all of a sudden are we seeing these headlines about rising inflation? Well, I I think part of the problem is they hear inflation, but they don't understand what causes inflation and why we're experiencing inflation. And I'm convinced a lot of people don't understand how inflation will impact them in retirement. Right. So, you know, I think, Michael, where we should start is sort of explaining why we are experiencing such inflation right now. Well, right now, it's kind of a perfect storm of a lot of different factors. So first, we had, like you mentioned earlier, the pent-up demand. People have been, uh, we're now getting back out from the quarantine, back out from the lockup. People are able to go purchase the cars, go on vacations again, start to travel again. 
well, they maybe purchase a car right now, right? It's yeah, not can, so if easy. They can find one. Right. Uh, so there is pent up demand, and there are supply shortages. So factories are shut down. Manufacturers are having a hard time finding, for example, microchips to put in those cars. So now there's a there's less supply. There's more demand that naturally drives up the prices for things, which leads to inflation. There are also other short, uh, other factors, such as there's more liquidity. Personal balance sheets are at all-time highs. People got lots of stimulus from the government. Wages are up. People have more cash to spend. Unemployment benefits extended, right? These are all causing greater liquidity and therefore greater demand in, in the supply chain was just really disrupted. And that's why we're seeing, for example, one-year-old cars selling for roughly the same price as a brand new car of the same model. That's right. Which has never been seen before. Right. Well, and, and Michael, can you go through some of the inflation numbers in specific area sectors? Yeah. So the biggest jumps that we've seen year over year from June 2020 to June 2021, car rentals are up 88% in price. Used cars are up 45%. Gas is up 45%. Airfare is up 25%. All these things that are associated with recreation, travel that we weren't doing a year ago during the quarantine. So, Michael, given that fact that we have, we, we didn't talk about the Fed. That's also a variable, right? I mean, printing money, stimulating the economy, bailing out what we call zombie companies are all factors without getting political, honestly. Those are all factors. And then when you're competing against the government to employ people, right, drives up wages, which is, is, is probably part of the objective. But when wages go up, the cost of goods go up and services go up, that means prices are going to follow. And it's also a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy because if a business expects inflation to go up, they're going to raise prices. That causes their competitors to raise prices. They're going to, people are going to start, start demanding higher wages to pay these higher prices. It's sort of its own self-fulfilling prophecy, prophecy there. It is. So now, so we, we, we are experiencing some inflation. If I said to you one year ago, Michael, we were going to see year over year over 5% inflation. We were going to see serious inflation. Lumber prices were going to spike, although they, I know they've settled back down, but lumber prices spike. All these things that you would typically see when you have inflation. How, as an investor, what would the textbooks tell you to invest in? Well, this is why this is so difficult to tackle, because if you had a crystal ball and you nailed all the inflation estimates for the, the coming year, last year in June 2020, if you knew a year from today, we're going to have 5.4% inflation. The textbook suggests the trade idea would be to short bonds, meaning sell bonds and buy commodities, buy gold. Well, fast forward till today, yields, despite this inflation, yields are not rising. So bonds are not falling. So you lose on that side of the trade. Not, let, me, let me add, long-term treasuries are down 9% year to date. And then gold, on the flip side, if you're buying gold to fight this inflation, gold's down about 5% year to date. Okay. So that trade didn't work. So even if you had a crystal ball and you nailed the inflation numbers and you knew it, the trade that 95% of people would expect to work didn't work. This is why we say that you can't time things, you can't time markets and stock pick your way to success. You can't. And so all the experts on TV right now, literally, if you change channels, you're going to get a different story about whether this is long-term inflation, transitory, short, even if we're, if, the, if we're really seeing inflation. And then everyone's going to debate how you should play that or trade that or invest that in the long-term impact to your portfolios it's going to have. There's no consistency. And no one has a secret sauce. No one has a special algorithm. And there's no textbook because the textbook was wrong again this time, right? Even with the crystal ball. Even if you had the crystal ball, you'd still get it wrong. Michael, you like to say uh, if you knew how many phones, Apple iPhones Apple was going to sell next year, you still wouldn't be able to, to nail that, that stock price. Well, right. There are people who they want to keep their Apple stock or way too much Apple stock because they love the company. Sure, it's a great company, but I could tell you how many iPhones they're going to sell, how many Apple watches they're going to sell, how many AirPods they're going to sell. And you still could not tell me the stock price a year from now because there are so many different factors that cannot be predicted. And this is the message, and this is what we're going to tackle the rest of the show, is that whether we have inflation or not, it's not going to change the way you approach your investments and manage your income in retirement. It's not. Well, let me rephrase. I said that wrong. Michael smiled. It's not how, going to change how we invest the money for a, someone appro approaching retirement or in retirement. The only thing that's going to change is where we're taking the money from to live on 
during what events that are occurring in the economy. And that's what I think we need to focus on the rest of the show. And it's what we focus on in our, in our seven-hour courses that are taught at all the major universities. And, of course, since the beginning of COVID, we started streaming these classes, and we continue to stream these classes so you can stay in the comfort of your home. These seven-hour courses are comprehensive in nature. It is a 200-page textbook, and we are going to give you a full roadmap to how to construct a 30-plus-year retirement plan, including tax planning, when and how to take Social Security, how to protect the surviving spouse, how to set up your estate planning. That's what the course is designed for, is to provide you that education. If you'd like to register, you can go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. To attend, you can also call 800-240-8981. There's much more straight ahead. You're listening to the Retirement Education Hour. Here with Kurt Cassidy, Michael Mazarin. They are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. Maybe you're ready to gain more confidence and more clarity about your retirement future. If that's you, make plans to attend the foundation's courses They sponsor courses at local universities throughout our community, and these are deep dives into all things retirement. It's either a one-day course or a two-day course, seven to eight hours, and it's your choice. You can attend in person or you can view online. Make sure you register. You can do that two ways. You can either call 800-240-8981. Write that number down. I'll give it to you again. It's 800 240 8981, and you're also welcome to register online. Simply go to retirementplanningedu.org. And if you want to stay up to date on everything the foundation is doing, make sure you go to Facebook and begin following Retirement Education Foundation. We've been talking about inflation, its effects on you, especially in retirement. I'm wondering, Kirk and Michael, how do we begin to plan for inflation and the way it could affect us throughout our retirement? Well, I think this is the reason I was so excited about this show, Megan and Michael, because I think there's so much misinformation, particularly in our industry, the financial service industry, about planning for retirement, and they create so much fear around inflation. Look, on the news, the the newspapers, social media, drama, uh, fear. Clicks, eyeballs. Clicks, creates clicks and eyeballs, attention, right? So we can, let's scare people so they'll watch us. There's a secondary piece of this that's problematic with our industry in that their business models are to be transactional in nature. It's to be scalable, right? So when someone says they're going to do a retirement plan for you, unfortunately, that retirement plan is going to likely be a cookie cutter, one size fits all plan that most of their clients get with minor adjustments, right? So it's in, 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 so for them to be most profitable, they need to sell as much as they can and meet as many of you as they can. So they don't have the time to customize an individualized plan for you. So what they do is they want you to self-regulate. And the self-regulation part is if they create fear about you outliving your money, and that's why you've all been conditioned to worry about this. And, and so the message is protect your principal at all costs, meaning if the market is doing underperforming or you start losing money, spend less. That's their solution. And that's just because it's simple. You'll self-regulate and they don't have to manage or build a plan. You just will spend less the years that the markets do poorly. They do the same thing around inflation. They talk about using 3 4% inflation numbers. Michael, I don't know that people can appreciate how different their spending patterns are going to be in their 60s versus their 70s versus their 80s and then, of course, into their 90s. Well, they don't. I mean, we tell people all the time, you need to realize your spending in your late 70s, early 80s is when it typically starts for most people is going to really start to reduce because you're not traveling as much. You're not going out to eat as much. You're not buying new homes at that point anymore. That these are the things where inflation really starts to eat into a budget. But when you're not doing those things or doing them much less, it's not as impactful. So the caveat always is health care. So let's set health long term care aside for a minute. We call the three phases of retirement the go-go years, the slow-go years, and then the no-go years. The go-go years is that first 
five to 10 years after you retire. You will never spend more money. In fact, statistically, 66% of you will spend more money in the first five years of retirement than you did the last five years when you were working. I know that's hard for a lot of you to believe. So part of the problem is these general rules are created for the average retiree, Michael. And I think everyone thinks they're average. And because they don't understand, look, the average baby boomer is only going to retire with $200,000. That's all they have saved. If you have saved more than $200,000, you are not average, and these general rules that they are promoting to everyone really doesn't apply to you. So protecting principle is silly. And the people, if you do try to apply those rules to your situation and you're not average or well above that average, you're going to underspend what you otherwise could have. Well, when we see that with inflation, right? The fear of inflation. So it, it takes someone that is going to live on $100,000 a year at 65 years old. And you put a three, four percent inflation, Michael. I'm rounding numbers. I don't know the exact numbers, but I'm guessing. Let's say by the time they're 85 years old, 20 years later, at a three and a half, four percent inflation rate, that's going to be close to needing two, a little over two hundred thousand dollars a year mm -hmm. to maintain their lifestyle, mm -hmm. right? So my question to all of you would be: Do you think at 85 years old, setting healthcare aside, set forget healthcare for a minute? Do you think the regular lifestyle, your spending habits, are going to be the same at 85 as they were at 65? And you know, I hope you all recognize the answer is no. I mean, look, we track all the data in our private practice. We take care of over 1,000 people and a billion dollars. We know people's spending patterns. I'm telling you, we're telling you, you're not going to spend in your mid-80s like you spend in your mid-60s. So as a result... Do you really need to use a 4% inflation factor because you're not going to have that lifestyle? And again, as a result, we see people spending much less than they could in their 60s during their go-go years when they're healthiest. And then come if, if they underspend in their 60s and 70s, now come their 80s and 90s, they have way more money than they intended. Their RMDs are much higher. Their forced income is much higher. Their taxes are a mess. So required minimum distributions. Michael said RMD. That is the part that really, I think is shocking for so many seniors. When they get in their mid-70s, early 80s, the required amount of money you have to take out of your accounts that the government makes you take, plus your Social Security, is often greater than what you were taking out when you were in your mid-60s when you were healthiest and could enjoy it. But now you're 80 and they're requiring you to take something you're never going to spend. So you just save it and it ends up going to your heirs, and we which hear is this fine. All the time of, of people saying, yeah, mom and dad, we, we were begging them to spend money. They wouldn't do it. And again, it's not because they were cheap. It's because they were scared. And, and they didn't understand what their money could do. And the, and the industry has created so much fear about protecting principal and inflation's going to destroy your retirement. It's not. It's not. If we see inflation, interest rates will go up. With that eventually here, and so will your equities go up, and your lifestyle is going to go down. So these are some of the mistakes that a custom individualized plan can help you avoid if you understand what to look for. And that's the purpose of our seven-hour courses, Michael. We teach these courses at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, the Novi Campus, and Troy Campus, Oakland University, and we also stream them live can stay in your home. It's a 200 page textbook. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. Much more straight ahead with Kirk and Michael. You're listening to the Retirement Education Hour. Glad you're with us for the Retirement Education Hour. Megan Mozak alongside Kirk Cassidy, Michael Mazarin. They are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. If you haven't registered for the foundation's courses yet, make plans to do that today. Two ways to do so, either online at retirementplanningedu.org, that's retirementplanningedu.org, or you can call today, 800-240-8981. Keep in mind, these courses are taught around the community at local colleges, universities. They're also streamed live. So if you want to watch from the comfort of your own home, you can do that. $29 to attend, two ways to register. We've been focused on inflation on today's show. 
and the impact, the potential impact it could have on your retirement. You shared some really great information last segment, Kirk and Michael. You said, though, health care. Set that aside. That's a, a whole different ball game. What did you mean by that? So we were, to be clear, for those of you who missed last segment, we were trying to explain to people that your lifestyle in your mid-80s won't look anything like in your ability to spend and in desire to spend in your mid-80s is going to look very different than it did in your mid-60s. So we tend to overestimate what we're going to need in our mid-80s. And one of the major reasons they do that, and our industry suggests that, and people are fearful of needing that those dollars is healthcare related, right? It's it's really specifically long term care, not general health care, but long term care. The need to have someone come in your home to take care of you, or being confined to a facility, or going into a facility where you need some assistance. These are health expenses that you're generally Medicare is not going to cover, at least not for an extended period of time. It's going to cover. So I think a default. And, and probably with good intentions that the financial in the service industry cre- it talks about the need of having a lot of money in your 80s, and that's why they build these big inflation factors into the retirement plans, is to make sure they have the health care, the long-term care events covered in your 80s. Michael, the statistics are daunting. Look, 70% of us are going to need some sort of long-term care. If you are unfortunate enough to be confined to a facility that requires nursing, the average cost in Michigan is just under $100,000 for a semi-private room. For in-home health care, someone to come in to help you, the average cost is around $40,000 a year, right? And so this is where this fear, anxiety, and this extra savings protecting the principal and building these big inflation factors into retirement plans come from. And Michael, I know it's something we talk about in our class a lot is there's a better way to approach this, right? We're not and have never been big fans of purchasing long-term care insurance. We have a general philosophy. We teach it. We explain how it works, long-term care, but we have a general philosophy. Our own bias is we don't like anyone buying something that if they don't use it, they lose it. And long-term care is something, if you you buying insurance, and if you never use it, you've lost all that money. Our preference is to use other tools. And there are other tools, other type of insured tools that can provide a safety net for long-term care. Or other types of life insurance that could be, the death benefit can be accelerated and used for long-term care if you need it. And then, Michael, if you don't need it, the loved ones, the surviving spouse or the kids get the life insurance benefit. And back to the long-term care insurance for just one second. One of the reasons um, we're not big fans of that also is because people think, well, I'm if I'm 62, I'm retiring soon. The premiums are very reasonable, and they are when you're younger. That's how they sort of rope people in is they're not that bad when you're younger. But as you get older, those premiums start to increase. Significantly. We've seen rate increase sheets of 100 or 200% per year increases. I, people sometimes hear that and don't believe us sincerely. I mean, we've got the – and I'm not sure I'm – I don't care. I'm going to say. So I have Genworth's most recent renewal sheet for the last 30 years, 70%, 110%. Every five-year ban, there, there's like these massive increases for people. And they're get, people are getting trapped. They've bought the insurance. They've thrown all this money when they were younger into this. Now they're seeing the increases and they're not sure what to do. I, I'm going to lose all this money if I cancel it. I should keep it. They're not sure what to do. So There are a lot of ways, and we just gave a couple of suggestions to address long-term care. There are a number of different ways to uh, tackle that challenge. But if you have that challenge tackled, whether it's self-insured, there's a lot of ways. As long as you have, for most of the people who attend our course, I'm really worried about the surviving spouse, right? If the first spouse gets sick, that healthy spouse will spend every last dollar to take care of that sick spouse, often leaving that surviving spouse without any resources, outliving that spouse's money. And and there's ways to prevent that and protect that surviving spouse that may be a little uh, less known, but it's something we talk about in the class. Because look, here's the deal. It's all about freedom in retirement. It's psychological. Your relationship with money is going to change. As you get older, you're going to be more vulnerable. You're going to feel more anxious. 
You won't be as disciplined about market events. Trust me. I don't care how smart and intelligent you are. As you age and no one else is sending you a paycheck every month and you have to pay yourself every month and you see your investments fluctuate, there's going to be lots of fear and anxiety. We hear all the time, oh, I didn't panic in 2008, or I didn't panic during this past COVID crash. Well, that's fantastic, but you still have someone else paying you. You're still working for a couple more years. That's going to be very different when you're retired. Right. So same thing applies with making sure there's a plan, some sort of plan to address if there's a health event, long-term care event in your 80s. And if you accomplish it, if you're able to achieve in your 60s, the knowledge and the belief that if something happens to me when I get older, there's a plan in place to make sure that we're covered in the, and my, my surviving spouse or my spouse will be protected. That's going to give you the freedom to spend more money in your 60s and 70s. That is invaluable. That is when you're healthiest, when you should don't put off something. There's so much to learn. I mean, there's so much to teach. We have eight-minute segments. This is why it's so important to attend. That's why the classes are seven hours. People ask, what can you teach for seven hours? There's a ton when you're building a comprehensive retirement plan to teach because not any one of you are the same. All of you have unique situations that require something custom and individualized for you. And that's why it takes seven, eight hours in these classrooms. This is why we're teaching at all the major universities. And we are offering these classes a couple of times a month. And if you're worried about COVID or you're uncomfortable going back into a university setting, we understand we're streaming them live so you can do them from the comforts of your own home. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity to attend these courses. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org or call 800 800- Two four zero eight nine eight one, And we'll be back. You're listening to the Retirement Education Hour. Happy to be alongside Kirk Cassidy, Michael Mazarin. They are both financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. Sign up for those courses we've been telling you about. If you haven't, do it right now. We make it easy for you. You can do it online at retirementplanningedu.org. Or give them a call today, 800-240-8981. That number again, 800-240-8981. You can attend in person. And again, the courses are held at local universities in our community. Or they're streamed on live. They're streamed online. So you can also watch from home, $29 to get registered and to attend Again, the phone number, 800-240-8981 or online at retirementplanningedu.org. We've been talking about inflation and Kirk and Michael, I've heard there is a correlation between inflation rates and interest rates. Explain how that works. So historically, you know, I, I almost want to, to, to swing this to Michael because, Michael, I know this is something you, you've studied a lot, but historically, correct me if I'm wrong, as inflation goes up, interest rates go up. Well, right. So t- to take a step back, inflation is typically a result of the economy heating up, which is a good thing. But as if it gets too hot, we start to see inflation rise, and that can be a bad thing. So there's a, there's a balance to be had there. Now, the Fed- Thus the Fed's job. The Fed will step in when inflation, when the economy is getting too hot, growing too quickly, inflation's ramping up, the Fed will step in and raise rates, which cool things down a little bit. So as a result, as we see inflation, interest rates tend to rise. Is that fair? Exactly. And now a lot of people are are not fans of the Fed stepping in to raise rates because that cools the economy off, but that helps prevent the economy overheating and potential recessions. It's also not a bad thing for seniors and savers because with higher rates come things like higher CD rates and higher bond yields. So we've said that for a number of years now that the, you know, the war, we've, we've had a war on seniors and savers, right? These low interest rates, these artificially driven down interest rates have really made it difficult for the senior and saver to invest and save money in a conservative nature to be able to keep up with just general low 2% inflation rates. The Fed has been pulling every arrow out of their quiver to try and keep the economy running through COVID, including keeping interest rates pinned to the floor with their federal funds rate and also by buying U.S. treasuries. So the Fed is buying a lot of U.S. treasuries, which keeps the interest rates low. 
So, Michael, I mean, to be, to be fair, the Fed has been doing this before COVID. It was uh, the financial crisis is when they started, right? Correct, yep. Uh, with QE and a number of different programs. They ramped back up due to COVID. And they ramped back up. Now, so it's really creating an environment that isn't very common right now, right? Where we see inflation at over 5% and the 10-year Treasury, just recently we saw it as low as 1.1%. Which I can't believe how stubborn the 10-year the Treasury is being, the 10-year Treasury yield is being, because at this point, people have nowhere to turn to. Inflation's at 5%, yields are at 1%. You're losing your money by lending the U.S. government your money. Absolutely you are. And, and I mean, we, we, we would need much longer show to explain, but it's pretty obvious why it's happening. I mean, the Fed's buying Treasuries. What are you going to – what are, what are foreign – Foreign government government's going to do. So, what are I they going to do? If you lend your your money to the German government, for example, your the yield is negative five percent before inflation. They have right. negative yielding debt. Right. There's nowhere else to go. So U.S. is the only game for any sort of yield right now. Any stable yield. Let's be fair. Correct. correct. There are places you can go, but it's less stable. So, so we bring this up in addition to the other topics we've covered today because I think it really impacts so many people here in Michigan with especially baby boomers, who have to make a decision relatively soon within the next five years of retirement whether to take a pension versus a lump sum. And some people understand this, but many don't. Your Many of your lump sums, not every company is this way, but most of the big automotive major companies, your pension lump sum is one of the major variables for most of you is the 10-year corporate interest rates, right? And Michael, explain how when and what has happened is interest rates have fallen, how they have benefited with their lump sums. So the reason for the correlation would take a long time to explain, but essentially it's you need to understand that they're inversely correlated. So as the 10-year corporate yield goes up, your lump sum is going to fall and vice versa. When the yields fall, your lump sum is going to rise. Now we saw historic lows in the 10-year corporate yield rate, and as a result, Lump sums are higher than they've ever been, ever been before. Ever in history, this is the highest they've ever been. And for a lot of people, so the general rule, Michael, I know, and again, limited segments, but we're going to do this quick. The general rule of thumb is for every 1% interest rates move, the value of your lump sum will move 10%. So as interest rates go, had gone down, as they have been going down, for every 1% interest rates fell, your lump sums were going up 10%. So take someone with a million-dollar lump sum pension and interest rate fell 1%, they saw their pension go up $100,000 in one year. Over the last three years, we've seen people with lump sums elevated, increased by 25 to 30%. And the opposite is true. As rates start to rise, whether it's this year, next year, whenever it happens, it's, it's going to happen eventually. As rates begin to rise those lump sums are going to start to come back down. And so, Michael, that is what we are going to talk about next segment, is that this is a really difficult decision for people, and there are many people, we would argue, that attend our courses that we have convinced to retire this year who had planned to retire in the next three to five years, but the risk of continuing to work as they understood the math with interest rates likely to go up and the and if we happen to have that perfect storm that we do have a market correction in the next three to five years, their 401k is going down, that would result, it result in lump sums being worth a lot less, pensions being worth less, and their 401k is going down at the same time. As a result, if you wait three years to retire, you may end up with a lot less money in retirement than you would versus retiring now. And so that... It's not a simple answer, and we're, not cer we're certainly not suggesting people should go out and run out and retire, but this is one of the major topics that we are right now covering in our seven-hour courses so that you can make an educated decision on when you can afford to retire, when is the cost-benefit analysis the best time to retire, how the market will impact your decision about retirement, these are all things that we're talking in our seven-hour courses that are taught at all the universities. If you'd like to register for one of these courses, you can go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. All we ask is for you to make a $29 donation to charity, and you can attend this course. 
or you can also call to register 1-800-240-8981. And we will continue your listening to the Retirement Education Hour. This is the Retirement Education Hour. Megan Mozak alongside Kirk Cassidy and Michael Mazarin. They are both financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. Don't forget to register for the foundation's courses. It's your choice, either a one-day, eight-hour course, or you can go to a two-day course. You can also take advantage of the live stream. Watch the course in the comfort of your own home to get registered. Go to retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. Kirk and Michael, I want to get right back into what we were talking about with this correlation between interest rates and inflation and the impact this could have on someone's pension. This is where you hear it all the time, right? Timing is everything. Timing is everything. And, and you know, the interesting part about people planning for retirement is the assumption that you get to choose when you retire and you don't often get to choose whether it's a a pandemic unfortunately a health event or an economic downturn you're often not getting to decide when you get to retire it happens to be in in our humble opinion this is a really really critical year for people who are planning to retire in the next call it 5 years because you have a unique environment with your pensions and lump sum right now that can work against you. It may get worse as you wait longer. So as a result, if your pension lump sums go down in value, you could spend the next few years working for practically free. Right. Well, we just talked in the last segment about how interest rates and lump sum pensions are inversely correlated. So as the interest rates have been falling for the past couple of years, we've been seeing lump sum pensions rising, increasing. Yes. Well, we just met with someone who came to see us with about a million dollar lump sum pension, was thrilled about it, but didn't understand that correlation, didn't understand that if they kept working and interest rates rose, their lump sum pension would fall. Yeah. In their particular case, because it was tight given their lifestyle, they actually retired a couple of years earlier than planned because they fought, they they were able to do the analysis. They had been through the course. They understood the, how to determine whether there's a the potential of a better outcome by working a couple extra years didn't outweigh the risk associated working a couple extra years in their particular case. That doesn't apply to everybody. And I think that's the importance of comprehensive planning, not making decisions just in isolation. In other words, don't look at your pension versus lump sum and try to make a decision based upon just those two variables. You need to understand spouse, your age, your lifestyle, your social security benefits, how much of your money is pre-tax versus post-tax, the tax implications of these decisions, the surviving spouse, long-term care, There are so many variables in making any individual decision when it comes to retirement. That's what makes this so much more complicated and unique than when you're young and just choosing an investment. And that's why I kind of- Did you notice I didn't say investment once in that for retirement planning? It's like fifth on the list of importance. I'm sorry. I digress. No, I kind of laugh when people come to the class. At first, they think that they're going to get answers on when is the best time to start Social Security? Should I take a pension or lump sum? Should I invest in this or that? And they walk away realizing it depends for everything. And the investments, like you said, are not the most important driver of what determines a successful retirement. It isn't. And so to make those decisions about what you should do, when to take Social Security, lump sum versus pension, when you should start withdrawing from your 401ks, when you have to start. So there's so many decisions to make and there none of them. It's not a one size fits all for anyone. There's no general rule that applies for any of those things. I know everyone's searching for it. And I also know the financial service industry pretends like there are, but there isn't. And so that's the importance of seven hours of education because it's going to teach you how to make these decisions holistically so that you have the most efficient and best outcomes not a general one-size-fits-all outcome. And with that extra education is also how people have less fears about the inflation factors and long-term care factors because they know they have a plan now that's built to and can prove to them, look, you can afford to spend X per year and you're not going to be left high and dry in your 80s or 90s. Outlive your money, right. So, Michael, the, the adage of 
education is power is, is always true. And part of the problem with the baby boomer generation, and particularly the demographic that attends our courses, they tend to be highly educated. They're engineers, physicians, executives, CPAs. They tend to be really highly educated, so they feel like they've got power. But as it applies to retirement planning, all they really might have a little bit of a handle on is the investment portion. But when to take income, from which accounts, at what age, or how much income they can take, or when they should take Social Security, and when they should take money out of a pre-tax versus post-tax account, and how to protect that surviving spouse, and how beneficiaries should be set up to give the greatest flexibility to the level, all of these variables have nothing to do with the education knowledge they have amassed to accumulate their wealth. They've been successful accumulating your wealth, but they haven't learned anything about the distribution the income, creating income from that wealth. Well, you're right. So this has been the most successful generation in history. There is going to be a, roughly $76 trillion being passed from the, this generation to the next generation because they were so successful. But accumulating your wealth is so much different than distributing and protecting your retirement later on. Yeah. And, and the emotional component is a, that's the disconnect for really, really sophisticated, bright people. Because mathematics are the first cognitive skill you're, that you're going to start to lose, connecting the dots. So not only are you responsible for yourself financially, no one else is sending you a paycheck, but you also have to manage the, the changes with your cognitive abilities, which creates fear, anxiety, your relationship with money changes, and you tend to shut down, spend less, underspend what you could otherwise be spending because we're in a market event which is crazy. So that's what we're teaching in the class. There's nothing to lose. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity to get seven to eight hours of education specific to retirement income planning. So if you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. Check out the class, the course, the syllabus. You can check out the white papers. You'll see the value. Retirementplanningedu.org, or you can just call 800 800- Two four zero eight nine eight one. Investment advisory services are offered by Strategic Investment Advisors, Inc., an SEC-registered investment advisory firm. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any insurance discussed in this show is backed by the financial strength and claims-paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual situation. Retirement Education Foundation is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during this show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Retirement Education Foundation. This radio show is a paid placement.